Do you, do you allocate on the basis of that? If, if Europe is in a better place, is Europe able to fund itself and doesn't have the recession the way the US does, does that mean you want to own European equities? I think that's such a sensible question to answer at the moment. So before the banking crisis, we're calling it crisis, although I know a lot of yep. us are trying to dampen it down a bit. Before that, investors definitely wanted to own Europe so far this year because they'd seen the outlook for the economy improve as we'd seen gas prices come down. We'd seen that feed through to earnings upgrades, which we hadn't seen elsewhere, and we saw lower valuations. Fast forward over these last couple of weeks, and as you say, the European situation in banks seems more comfortable. It's still not great, but more yep. comfortable. It can be lived with. And the uh, the ramifications seem less in Europe. So in the US, it feels like the... Um the regulations around banks will be mm -hmm. ramped up and therefore their lending patterns will slow and there will be much more to, uh, to impact the US economy than will happen in Europe. And then the other thing I think is whenever we get a crisis, we forget about things. And what are the two things we've forgotten about now? We've forgotten about the China reopening, which is probably better for Europe, probably mm -hmm. helps yep. European companies more. And we've forgotten about the US debt crisis, which I know your, your uh, BI team are all over and is something that will come back and, and possibly demand more of a discount to the rating we're seeing in the US now in future. So, yes, I think Europe looks a better place to be. Um, Rebecca, if that's the case, and, and we just go to the FX market as a bit of a proxy, why can't the euro break out at 110? Because you might say, oh, well, because we still have an energy crisis in Europe where it's felt more acutely. Uh, there still is the war with, Euro, uh, with, Euro, with the closer proximity. I mean, is that, does that explain it? Well, I think there's a lot going on because normally in a situation where you've got stress or, or crisis, everyone goes to the dollar as, as the safer of the currencies. This time, and, and as to the earlier question, if the US is in the more difficult position and if they are causing the stress, then people won't want to go to the dollar. So I think there are just, there's so much bubbling here that actually you're not seeing the breakout that you might do normally. There's just, there is too much at play. And to be frank, we're seeing views change every day yeah. in the currency market. In theory, Europe has a lot of what you would consider to be defensive stocks. A lot of consumer staples, it's got the healthcare industry that is very large. Yet the market is not flocking to those areas for safety, it's flocking to tech. Mm. And if you want to go to tech, you go to the United States. Does that undermine the case for European equities? Well, I think there's plenty to go for in Europe. Uh, you're right, the tech sector is much smaller, but if you think about some equivalent areas, the healthcare gives you that sustainable growth, and I think more and more people are asking about that area, more and more clients are yep. asking about that. But I think you've got some of our very big industrial players which stand to gain from infrastructure spending from the government, stand to gain from clean, out, um, clean power infrastructure oh. um, building. So, no, I really do think we have some great companies out there, Rebecca, and though, people need to just be a little bit open-minded. But to that point, wouldn't that be even more so in the U.S.? I mean, we're even seeing European companies divert capital to the U.S. because of the IRA. Well, I think you're right. So I think the IRA has... Basically, it's caught the headlines, hasn't it? And it, it's... Uh, the, the obvious thing is then to look at the US. But actually, we know that Europe's fighting back. We know that they have their own bills, that the uh, re Renew Energy Bill. We know that the UK... Actually, this has been discussed in Parliament as well, whether there should be more infrastructure spending. So I do think there's an opportunity for that type of company, both sides of the Atlantic. So what do you do? Do you... How, how would you position right now? You've got a potential credit crunch uh, coming in the United States. Uh, you've got the potential for rates to go higher here in Europe, which in theory is going to slow the economy down. What do I want to do? A lot of people are moving money into money market funds at the moment because they don't know what the picture is going to look like over the next few months. How defensive should you get at this point? Do I want to allocate to equities? What do I want to do with my bond portfolio? Well, I think so, so, so that cash on the sidelines is a positive. That yep. certainly is reassuring clients. So we don't see panic amongst clients. We see them reassured that the cash is there. In yeah. the, uh, either in the money market funds, or if you think about ETFs, in the, the cash equivalent funds, so in the, the very short duration treasury bills funds that we see out there. So that's a good thing. So people are ready. So maybe they think about banks, maybe they think about it in the broader context in Europe, you know, about the financial sector, thinking about insurance and financial services companies, which actually haven't been affected by this crisis. Maybe, as you say, they start to think more of those sustainable growth areas like healthcare, and maybe they start to think about areas which would benefit from Chinese reopening which would encompass some of your industrials, mm -hmm. maybe some of your consumer discretionary stocks within Europe. Rebecca, how, how much of those catalysts that you talk about do you think are priced? I mean, in some ways, luxury stocks have never been this pricey relative to the broader market. How much of those things are already priced? 
some of them are, but we have a market that does go to extremes. And if we do see um, earnings change, relative earnings growth, then quite often you can see more within that rating. And I think for now, I mean, we, we, you asked about tech. You could say that actually the tech benefits were largely in the price. So um, mm -hmm. I, I think it depends on that investor sentiment, how, how far they let those rating discrepancies run.